Hello and welcome back to Alexpo. My name is Samuel Sparrow. And today we've got a really nice, simple and fun experiment for us to do. With the new season approaching faster and faster day by day, and with a couple clubs who we haven't seen in a long time, I thought it'd be interesting to see what will happen if we were to simulate the upcoming season and try to predict the outcome. Watford, Norwich and Burnley have been relegated from the Premier League, whilst Bournemouth, Fulham and Nottingham Forest, who haven't competed in the top flight of English football for 23 years, has been promoted. A few other adjustments have also been made. For example, I've boosted Newcastle's transfer budget, signed some players who've already been confirmed and also a few haven't to make it more interesting, and appointed managers who have already been confirmed for the upcoming season. Right, so let's dive into the simulation, see what happens. Right then, here we are at the start of the simulation, 5th of July 2021, and as you can see, Bournemouth, Fulham and Nottingham Forest are now in the Premier League, and of course, Burnley, Norwich and Watford are in the championship. Now a few notable changes have been made. For example, at Arsenal, Alexander Lacazette has left and they brought in Fabio Vieira. At Chelsea, Romelu Lukaku has left to go back to Inter Milan and Raheem Sterling has been signed in replace. Now this has not been confirmed, but there's a strong possibility it will happen, so I thought it'd be good just to include him. A few more notable changes is that at Liverpool, Sadio Mane has left for Bayern Munich and in replace signed Darwin Nunez. And of course, Manchester City signing Erling Haaland and losing Raheem Sterling, well, at least in my simulation they have. And at Manchester United, they have lost one matter, Paul Pogba, Jesse Lingard, and signed Frankie De Jong, and of course appointed Eric Ten Hag as their head coach. Now a lot of other changes have been made, of course I've boosted Newcastle's transfer budget, and I haven't even gone over all the transfers, for example uh, Tottenham, they've got Bissouma, and other clubs have made signings as well, but I just thought I'd point out the biggest ones. As we can see, the first fixture is Man City versus Everton, you'd expect Man City to win. Arsenal versus West Ham. I'm I'm actually going to favour West Ham here. Crystal Palace versus Chelsea. I'm of course going to favour Chelsea. Fulham versus Man United. Well, of course you'd be stupid to not go for Fulham. I'm joking. Manchester United. Southampton versus Nottingham Forest. I'm going to back Forest here. Brighton versus Tottenham. Yeah, I, I think Tottenham's definitely going to win that. Even though Graham Potter's no mug though. I do I do expect Brighton to put up a good fight. Wolves versus Newcastle. That's going to be a really really fun game considering Newcastle probably going to sign a lot of players in the uh, summer window. So let's let's look out for that. Bournemouth versus Villa. Um yeah, I think Villa's going to take that easily. Leicester versus Leeds. I think that's quite well balanced. Um I I'm going to side with my team Leicester there. Anyway, let's go to August and see who signs who in this transfer window. Right, okay, so the date is 12th of August 2021, one day before the first fixture of Man City versus Everton. Let's have a look at the transfers, see who signed who. Okay, so West Ham just unloading some of their deadwood. Same with Tottenham, nothing particularly too interesting. Manchester United signed a player, nothing too interesting. Man City unloading a few players as well. Uh, same for Liverpool. Leeds as well, wow. We've been like Shane Flynn. That's not too bad. Oh, okay. Liverpool signed Manuel Lazari. Not too bad. Tottenham signed Luis Felipe. Huh. Nothing too interesting. Romelu Lukaku was signed for Manchester United on a free transfer. Oh, my God. Chelsea are livid. Oh, my God. Jesse Lingard to Wolves. That's really interesting. Okay. Paul Pogba to Newcastle. Oh, my God. What? Wow. That's really interesting. So, as you have noticed, the players which I removed, I didn't actually sign to their, I suppose, quote-unquote confirmed clubs. Nothing has happened just yet. But, you know, Romelu Lukaku will be going to Inter Milan and Paul Pogba will be going to Juventus, it is believed. But, however, since, you know, I thought it'd be a bit more interesting if we weren't to completely confirm it, just in case something happened on the last day, that is why that's happened. Right then, let's go two months forward to the 12th of October and see how the league is shaping up. Right then, here we are, 12th of October 2021, and in first place is Chelsea. Six wins, one draw, zero losses, 19 points. In second place is Antonio Conte's Tottenham Hotspur. Five wins, one draw, one loss, 16 points. In third place is Southampton. Fourth place, Leeds. Fifth place, Arsenal. Sixth place, Liverpool. And Manchester City, all the way in 12th. All the way in 12th. If we have a look at the transfers now, the transfer window is over. We can see that West Ham just unloading more and more players. Same with Tottenham. 
Oscar signing for Newcastle, and Angel Di Maria from Paris Saint-Germain to Newcastle as well. Oh, wow. Newcastle unloading a lot more players, as well as Manchester United and Manchester City, as well as Liverpool. My God. Unloading Minamino, Origi, we all already knew that. Wow. Now, that is a shock. Where was Newcastle? Newcastle is eighth. Okay. So, Newcastle aren't doing too badly here. Newcastle are doing okay. Leicester in seventh, of course. Wow, that is a huge surprise. Manchester United in 13th and Manchester City in 12th. I was expecting Manchester City to start blitzing the league now they had Haaland because I thought that was the only weakness in that entire team. But no, evidently not. How are the new teams faring? So Bournemouth haven't had a great start in 19th. Nottingham Forest, um, I mean, I, I did predict them to do um, better. But 17th, you know, if they could stay up and uh, stay in the Premier League for a few years, get themselves established, that's all you could really hope for for a team that's just been promoted. And Fulham just above them there in 16th. Right, so that is a huge shock. Let's go two more months into the future to the 12th of December and see how the league is shaping up. Right then, here we are, the 14th of December 2021. And as we can see, Chelsea is still in first place, not having lost a game the entire season. Arsenal have recovered well in second place with 34 points. Southampton holding strong in third place place who would have expected that liverpool in fourth so they're starting to climb newcastle in fifth come on the magpies manchester city recovered uh, and recovered really well in sixth place um yeah yeah 29 points still not the uh not the season they were hoping for, but much better than 12th place. Leeds in 7th. Manchester United recovered as well in 8th place. Not the season I'm sure they were hoping for, but they are in the middle of a rebuild, of course. So, not as much expectation as it's only Eric Ten Hag's first season in charge. Antonio Conte. He must be absolutely fuming. He's dropped all the way to 9th from 2nd. That's unbelievable. Now, sadly, Fulham, Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest in the relegation zone. To be expected, really, but I was hoping Nottingham Forest would be able to stay up, even if it was just barely. I was just hoping that um, they would be a mainstay in the Premier League for a few more years to come. But, you know, uh, it's you know always upsetting just to see the same teams go down and come back up and then go down. It's just, you know. So there we are. The league is shaping up as though we'd probably expect it. Let's go two more months into the future, into February, and see if Southampton or even Newcastle could get even higher. Right, so here we are, 21st of February 2022, and the league is looking a lot more consistent with what we were expecting. Chelsea in first, which is a bit of a shock, but not too big of a shock. Liverpool in second, then Manchester City in third. However, Leeds in fourth, and Southampton in fifth. Newcastle also climbing to sixth. Very good. Now, I did happen to catch, a, ca a, catch uh, in the corner of my eye uh, whilst, uh, whilst I was on holiday that Arsenal... As we can see, Patrick Vieira has been signed as the full-time manager following Mikel Arteta's sacking. Okay, I wouldn't have expected that. I really wouldn't have. Also, as we can see in the Champions League, upcoming fixtures, Manchester United versus Villarreal. Now, they lost to them in the Europa League final, so interesting to see how they'll match up. Chelsea versus Sporting, Liverpool versus Real Madrid. That will be an absolutely amazing game. Right, so let's go two more months into the future and see how the league will wrap up. Right, so here we are, 25th of April 2022, and as expected, Chelsea, Manchester City, Liverpool and Manchester United make up the top four. However, Leeds and Southampton done absolutely amazing, finished 5th and 6th respectively, and Newcastle in 7th, very good. Arsenal in 8th, so Vieira hasn't really managed to do anything. Antonio Conte's Tottenham in 9th. And it's sad to believe, but unfortunately... Unless a miracle happens from Fulham, all three of the promoted clubs will be relegated again. Now, looking at the Champions League, an English club will definitely be in the final. The two semi-finals of Real Madrid versus PSG and Manchester United versus Chelsea. Manchester United have made an unbelievable recovery. If Eric Ten Hag manages to finish in the top four and wins the Champions League, my lord. Now, out, now just out of interest, let's go to the 5th of May and see which club will be competing in the final, whether or not it's Chelsea or Manchester United. Right, so here we are on the 5th of May, and as we can see, the final will be Chelsea versus Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, Chelsea winning 4-2 on aggregate against Manchester United. Now, nothing much in terms of the league has changed. Chelsea still in first, Manchester City have climbed to second, Liverpool in third, and Manchester United in 
fourth. A successful first season for Eric Ten Hag as manager, finishing in fourth and the Champions League semi-final. Very well done. Now, something very interesting is the FA Cup. The final will be Newcastle versus Wolves. That's really, really interesting. So let's go forward to the 15th of May and see who will prevail? Right then, here we are on the 15th of May. Let's check out the, the FA Cup. And as we can see, Newcastle have won the FA Cup in their first season under their new ownership. That is really, really cool. In respects to the league, Chelsea have, of course, finished first. Liverpool in second. Manchester United climbed to third. Manchester City dropped to fourth. Southampton in fifth. Newcastle in sixth. If they manage to retain that, an FA Cup win and European football in their first season under their new manager, uh, new well, yeah, new management and their new ownership. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Leeds in seventh, pretty good. Arsenal in eighth, yeah, nothing, absolutely nothing. West Ham ninth, Tottenham in tenth, and uh, Fulham, Bournemouth, and Nottingham, unfortunately, relegated. Oh dear. Well, that's really it. Let's let's fast forward to the end of the season, see who wins the Champions League, and yeah. Right then, here we are on 30th of May. Let's see who's won the Champions League. And it was PSG on penalties. Absolutely well done to PSG. Their first Champions League. I'm sure Chelsea will be devastated, but I'm sure they're going to bounce back next year. Let's have a look at the league. As expected, nothing much has changed. Newcastle unfortunately dropped to 7th. But really, nothing too interesting. Nothing much has changed. Chelsea... I've won the league and unfortunately lost out in the Champions League final, but I'm sure they'll bounce back. Right then, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like and a few comments and a few ideas of what you guys would like to see. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I've been Samuel Sparrow and I'll see you next time. Bye.